Today, I want to talk about emerging trends in language around healthcare. We've definitely seen shifts in the way that we think about gender, race, class, underserved populations. And it's a struggle as a healthcare writer when you're thinking about how to address your majority audience to also make sure that you're being inclusive and ensuring that some of the people that you're not talking to, talking to, when they encounter your content, feel comfortable with what they're reading. Because we know that research shows that when people feel left out of healthcare conversations, they're less likely to seek care and we never want that to happen. So what are some of the things that we can do to make sure that our healthcare content is more inclusive in thinking about the language that we use when we're writing and communicating? Listen, let me tell you something. It is amazing to me how much we think about content and content marketing and writing, and yet we don't test our content. We don't have other people read it. We don't make sure that we are being inclusive. So here are some tips that I think that you can use to make sure that your content is uh, including different populations while still keeping your eye on the majority. The first thing that you really want to do is you want to have people read it who are different races, ethnicities, uh, people who have come from different backgrounds, people who are diverse, who can give you some insight. Uh, we have a great example at Aha Media Group. One of the people that works here adopted a daughter from Ethiopia, and she always talked about how when she read healthcare articles about rashes, they always talked about how rashes looked on white skin. They never talked about how it looked on other kinds of skin. And so that's something that we've become really aware of when we write healthcare content about making sure that we are being as inclusive as possible. The second thing that you can use, and that's going to create content governance in your organization, is using cheat sheets. The American Medical Association has a great one. I know the CDC isn't so popular right now, but they have diversity and inclusion guidelines. And this can really help your organization think through how to handle those delicate terms. One of the things that I've always found so fascinating about healthcare is that we typically go on the statistic that 80% of healthcare consumers are women. And that actually is a statistic that was taken from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that had to do with the idea that 80% of women were in charge of purchasing decisions in the home. And that stat doesn't have any citation. So we really have no idea where that comes from. There are studies that say that there's more than 80% of women are responsible for healthcare decisions in the home. And so if you're writing for the majority audience of women, you're going to think about what might appeal to a female decision maker. But we know that gender isn't so cut and dry anymore. And we know that there are plenty of men making healthcare decisions as well, as well as non-binary individuals. So how do we think those things through? People-centered language. We don't say a cancer patient. We say a person with cancer. We don't say an obese patient. We say a person with obesity. And we don't use the word suffer or combat or tackle. Those are terms that indicate some sort of violence. And we don't need to bring that into our healthcare language. We want to be empathetic and reassuring and make people feel hopeful. Like these are issues that they can deal with and that they should feel comfortable going after the healthcare that they need. So it's a good idea to really do some sort of audit on the content that you're writing. I don't know if you need to go back and look at the last, you know, 10 years of content that you've written or even 10 months, but sit down with your team and think about how you are going to have more diverse and inclusive language. Because you'll see that even though you think you're talking to a majority audience, there are other really important members of that audience who also can become your future healthcare consumers. I'll see you next time on Listen, Let Me Tell You Something.